So let's talk about the difference between people who do and people who prepare. This is something I've seen in several different disciplines. I've seen it in martial arts. I've seen it most recently with the cameras. I see it in software development, web design, web development, whatever development. So what is it is, what is it that I'm talking about? The preppers versus the doers. So I'll start with martial arts. So I did martial arts for about 30 years, pretty consistently. Many different schools, many different styles. Some traditional stylist, some uh, combat, boom, boom, boom. Some self-defense street oriented stuff. I noticed that in the martial arts there are two types. There's many ways to divide people up and things up, but for the sake of this video, there are two types of people. Those who actually got in the ring and fought. Those who actually fought. I used to be a bouncer. Versus those who prepped and practiced. We'll go to Muay Thai, Thai boxing. We'll go to boxing. So I call... A certain class of people who train in a boxing gym or a Muay Thai gym, I call them the pad hitters. They just hit pads. They do pad drills. They get in great shape. It's very good exercise. It's cool. But they never go into the ring. They never actually fight. Now, if you're at a boxing gym or a Muay Thai gym because you want to get in shape and you don't want to get your face busted up, I'm sympathetic to that. That makes sense. But there are people who go into these gyms, these fighting gyms, these sports fighting gyms, with the under the pretense that they are there to learn how to fight, but they never actually get into the ring, or very rarely. They spend most of their time prepping by hitting the pads. They're pad hitters. And as I've taught in other videos, if you're a pad hitter, you're going to never really progress too far. You're going to become good at hitting pads, but you're never going to become a fighter. So you can take a pad hitter who's been hitting pads for two years versus a guy you get him off the street or a girl and you train him up for six months in the ring fighting <clears throat> on a regular basis. They're going to destroy the pad hitter. Now, I've noticed that with cameras as well with videography as well. So I've been learning about working with cameras here in the last uh, few years. And I've seen the same pattern with the camera groups. So if you look online, you look at the YouTubers, you see a group of people who just produce content. The biggest out there is like Casey Neistat. You get the content producers. They have the equipment, I'm sure they know, and they selected their equipment according to their needs, but they're much more concerned about the content. Meanwhile, you have another class, a YouTuber, who they're just much more concerned about the gear. They're the gear, the, the gear sluts, as they say. <laughs> and it's the same thing that the martial artists, the pad hitters versus the people who actually fight, who get in a ring and spar. You have the same thing in software development. You have people who are very, very, very concerned about the technologies they learn. They're very concerned about being left behind in terms of, oh, what's the new great thing? I got to learn this. And they get caught up in tutorials. Brad Traversy, I think, mentioned this, uh, tutorial-itis or something. The perpetual tutorial doer rather than project builder. What you're going to learn, just like learning how to fight, the only really real way that you're going to get good at software development is to actually build projects, build projects. That's why in my course, shameless plug, that's why in my course, I teach the foundations, what teaches you a lot and it gets you very, very quickly. I do some projects and I provide a bunch of projects, but in reality, you should only do one or two, maybe three of the little mini projects. And then I, I teach that you get out there and you actually do work. You do real things. Just like in fighting. You know, you, once you have your basics down, your fund, foundational techniques and movements and strategies, etc., you got to jump in the ring. That's how you really learn how to fight. And that's how you're going to really learn how to code. 
Now, when it comes to cameras, I got caught up in a bit in that, trying to understand the different types of cameras I have. See, I got camera one here, I got camera two here, understanding how to work with them. And actually, you know, it, I find it takes three years to kind of really get comfortable with a new field of study, whether it be martial arts, whatever. I, it's been three years now I've been working with different cameras. I'm finally starting to get my head wrapped around this so I understand what I'm doing. At the end of the day, I'm going off on a tangent here. At the end of the day, just like what it is with martial arts, just like what it is with software development, just like what it is with business, just like what it is now with videography and cameras, it's all about the basics. If you have your basics, then everything else becomes uh, easy. Your level of production just shoots up. So yeah, I've seen that with the camera people too. You got people who are just wrapped up in the cameras. Oh, what camera? What kind of what kind of camera I'm going to use? Should I need this camera? Oh, is my my movie's going to be better if I get that camera? The fact of the matter is, is that all the modern cameras these days, they're all really really good. They each have their pluses and minuses. Some are better at low light. Some are better at autofocus. Some have better color science. If you're into cameras, you understand what I'm talking about. Same thing with martial arts. Certain types of martial arts lend itself better to certain body types, certain circumstances. Same thing with cars. I drive a convertible uh, sports car, uh, Audi S5, and uh, it's not the best car for this city because this city is so full of potholes. Uh, it's like after it's like playing the Super Mario Brothers to avoid all the potholes. So it's hard to find a nice smooth street in Montreal. I live up in Montreal, Canada. Why is that the case? Well, partly it's because of the weather, partly because we have massive corruption. Massive corruption with the construction industry and the building of the roads. And It's, it's not hyperbole on my part. It was all revealed a big commission. Uh, I think it was called the Charbonneau Commission a few years ago, and nothing, nothing happened too much. One or two mayors got thrown in jail, but that's about it. But uh, we still got the crappy roads. Anyway, so yeah, the doers and the preppers, if you really want to learn, don't spend nearly as much time as the preppers spend prepping. Just do it. Just do your basics. Jump into it. Start building things. People go to boot camps partly because, so they've told me, so that they can get the stage work. So after they do the boot camp, the, stat, the boot camp, Who's taking five, ten, twenty thousand dollars of your money to get you a position, an entry level position at some place where they're not paying you as a stash? Guess what? With my courses, once you've done your foundations, and there's other courses too, but with my courses, I'm biased. I think they're the best. I'm biased though. And they're the best at what I do. I think there's complementary course creators out there and I think that it's a good idea to listen to different voices as you're learning anything when I was studying martial arts I trained under many different teachers many different teachers over the years and each teacher brought something to the game some more than others but each one brought something to the game when I was learning how to code back in the 90s there weren't video tutorials, which there were. There were. I actually put out some of the first code video tutorials in the world in 2002, 2003. But I learned with books, hundreds and hundreds of coding and programming and software development books. Because different authors, different languages gave me different perspective on the subject. So if you're learning this stuff... My suggestion to you, again, a little shameless self-promotion. Start with my foundations, and then you can go in all kinds of different directions. It's kind of like that old uh, Christian uh, story, um, give a man a fish, feed him for a day. That's a code tutorial, the fish. Or teach him how to fish, feed him for life. So with my courses and my teaching strategy, it's the latter. I'm here to teach you how to... Uh, those foundations so that you can learn anything you want afterwards without needing uh, any advanced tutorial. Anyhow, yeah, so don't be a uh, prepper. 
Don't be somebody who's constantly stuck in tutorials. Be somebody who actually just gets out there and works with people. If you happen to be somebody who's learning how to fight, why don't you get your basics down? Get in the ring. Get in the ring. Start sparring. Trust me. One sparring uh, match, you know, like three rounds, uh, whatever, five minutes, whatever it is, depending on if you're doing boxing, MMA. One of those sparring sessions is worth months of pad hitting. Months of pad hitting. On top of the fact that the sparring session is going to teach you so much that you can never get with drills and pads. What can't you what can't you get with drills and pads that sparring gives you? You learn how to deal with pressure, how to apply it, how to absorb it or deflect it. You learn strategy and tactics, you learn mental control, emotional control. These are all things timing, these are all things that you cannot get with pad hitting. You have the equivalent in the software development game as well. There are uh Aspects of working with the client, getting the feedback, writing up the contracts and the specification sheets uh, so that everybody is on the same plate, the back and forth, managing the code, deploying on deadlines. One of the flaws I used to see in a lot of academic programming books, and I still see it today, where it was clear to me that the, the people who wrote the book on language, whatever language you pick, it was clear to me <clears throat> they knew the language, but they'd never produce much code in a real-world commercial context. When you're coding against a deadline, you got to deal with shifting requirements sometimes. Uh, and, and some people go, oh, there shouldn't be shifting requirements. Welcome to the real world, buddy. <laughs> Welcome to the real world. Yes, you define your specification. You define... The parameters, if you will, of the uh, of the application that you're building, but there will be changes. There's not a, a question about that. There will be some changes, especially if you're dealing with small business, especially if you're dealing with startups where uh, it's very new. It's very new. If you're working for IBM or Microsoft, or where everything is very, very established, where you're just updating Word or something, then I would imagine. Uh, there, there's going to be, it's going to be a little bit more consistent. But then again, let me tell you, the code base in Windows, there's a reason it went from uh, 300 megs to 3 gigs or whatever Windows is now. Why? Because none of the uh, new coders who were building Windows wanted to mess with any of the code left behind by the old coders because it was such a mess. I got that direct from the horse's mouth. So, you know, there's theory and then there's reality. I see that in martial arts too. There's the theoretical martial arts had all these ideas about how things should be in a fight, but they never fought. So they came, so they, they got into this bubble, this martial art weird bubble, where they came up with all these crazy ideas. And then when they finally get into a street situation, they get, they get their, their butts heading back to them. So you don't want to be disengaging from reality for too long in the software development game in any game where you're in constant tutorials or constantly doing theoretical uh, things like uh, algorithm competitions and breakdown that's all bs the reality situation you get into the game you do you start off the first few months you get your your foundations your theory down and then what you do is you get out there and you start building and based on what you need to learn, I call it need to learn, you know, I call it need to nerd. You learn on a need to nerd basis, and that's how you're going to really become a proficient software developer. Need to nerd, mindful of the foundations, best practices, you're going to get there very quickly. That's it. All right. Bye-bye.